Let's learn how to create beautiful scene transitions with the React Refiber. It's a topic that I've been asked about a lot. For example, with the Adidas Chile 20 website, or the summer afternoon opening transition. It's finally time to dive in. As the best way to learn is by doing, this tutorial will be in two parts. This first part will be about the basics of scene transitions using render target and a custom shader material. I have created a starting template that I will explain to you in detail. You can find the link in the description. We will use it for the second part. You and I will have one week to try to create the best scene transition possible. You can add your submission to a dedicated Discord channel I created. In the second part, I will show the best scene transitions you have created and my attempt at it. Only submissions made before Friday, December 8th, which is my birthday by the way, will have a chance to be in the next video, but it's never too late to learn and practice. I hope you will be many to participate and I can't wait to see what you will create. This is the starter template we have. Before explaining it, let's have a look at what we have so far. On the top right, we have different controls. The first one that will interest us is to be able to switch between different modes. So it's different kitchen layouts. We are in the number zero. When we change to the one, we have different walls, different floor, and even different items displayed. Let's change to the second one and it's new colors and new items. So you can see it already includes a basic transition. We have the choice between horizontal or vertical. Let's try this one. And the only difference is the axis where we do our transition. What you will have to do is to create a way more interesting transition. Well, I will also have to do it. I added another parameter, which is the transition speed. If we put it very low, the transition will be slow and smooth. And the contrary, if I put a high value, the transition will be somehow instant. We will explain the progression right after explaining what is really happening in our scene. First, let's comment some few things to understand what is happening in this scene. Let's create const true var is equal to true true var we will return it just to avoid my pressure to remove everything below i will stop all the complex things below and i will just need to add an orbit controls to see our scene if we reload this is what we have so we can see our kitchen here so it's our 3d model it currently shows all the objects this is because we are not hiding or showing them and it's displaying the colors of floors and walls that is in the GLB at the export time, but it, it has no importance right now. And we can see we have a plane right here. Well, it's not very visible, so I will hide the rest. Here we will also do render scene that current and visible is equal to false. And same for the example scene. So if we stop displaying our 3D scene, we have only a plane that is taking the whole screen. Why do we have that plane? It's because we will try to render our scene through that plane. Why do we want to do this? It's because to do our transition between two scenes, what we want to do is to be able to do the transition with a shader. So we create a plane taking up the whole screen like we have here. And instead of rendering the scene inside our 3D world, we will display it only on that plane. This is the same concept that we saw when we did the how to build a 3D slideshow with React Refiber tutorial. So let's see what we have to do. Yeah, I know you like when I draw to be able to have two scenes and to do a transition between them. What we will do is very simple. We will have a camera, which is not the one that we will display. We will use that camera that is able to see our 3D scene. So in that 3D scene, there are multiple objects. Let's say we have a cube. It's our scene one. And on the scene two, we want to display a sphere. They are both in the same world at the same time, but we will use render targets to do two renders of the scene. So the first render, we will hide the sphere. So let's say it's the first render, we have our camera. We will hide the sphere, so we will only be able to see the cube. Then what is rendered, we will save it 
into a texture with the render target. Then right after, in the same frame, with the same camera and sensing we, we display, we hide the cube and instead we display our sphere. And that will be stored into the second texture with another render target. So in the end, we have two textures. So this one here and this one here that we will render on the white plane I showed you. And for this one, we will use a shader that will take the two textures as inputs, so texture one and texture two, and using a parameter, so let's say it's 0 0.5, if it's at 0 0.5, it will display texture one, and everything above will display texture two. And by adjusting that parameter here, we'll be able either to show texture one or texture two. This is a bit conceptual, but you have all the data inside that shader to be able to do a nice transition between the two textures. If you want a better understanding about a render target, I recommend you my lesson dedicated to this in my React 3 Fiber course. Now let's re-enable the code so you really understand what is happening. So we can get rid of that. We have our 3D scene, and if we change the mode, it's transitioning between the first one and the second one. We can adjust the progression to show either one or another scene. Here it's the same scene, but we just change the material between the renders and hide and display other objects. Let's use a completely different scene so you visualize it better. So here we do our first render to render target one, and then we do our second render with render target two. Instead of displaying the same scene, but with different materials and different items visible, we display another scene. So what we see is the second scene. If I change the progression, you can see we are transitioning between one scene and another. They don't have to be the same object. You can really do whatever you like to have a nice effect. And because I kept the orbit control, you can see that if I rotate my camera, what we see is the plane rendering our scene. But in our project, we will disable that orbit controls. So we have the feeling we are within that world here. So let's get rid of the example. And instead, we will get rid of orbit controls here. And we have that camera controls that is only controlling that perspective camera, which is not the main camera. It is the camera that filmed the scene. So when it moves, it only moves within the plane and it's not the main camera that see the plane. That's why when we move the camera here, it works nice. And if we do some transition, we can still move the camera between the transition. This is the model we are using that I found on Sketchfab and I reworked it a bit using Blender. I added some items that we show or hide based on what mode we are. So we have mode zero, we have those objects, this, and I think it's one of the plants. We have mode one, which is that couch and another plant. We have mode two, which is the desk and the couch here. Then what I did is in shading, I created other type of materials. So floor one, floor zero, and floor two. So we have three type of floors that we can use for our scene transitions. I use the simple naming convention, so it's easy to use in our code. So it's floor two, and the objects that has this material applied in the scene is named floor. Same for the walls. We have wall and wall zero, wall one and wall two. If you are familiar with Blender, you know that unused material, so for example, I'm on wall one, wall two is not used. So if I export it, wall two won't be exported. I used a very ugly solution for that. I created some planes in the background, in the non-visible part of the scene. So I'm sure that they are exported because they are used somewhere. Of course, I could load the material manually or I could make them very small or hide them completely. But because I don't allow users to see that part, it's not an issue. Then to load this model, I simply used use GLTF. I renamed the scene Modern Kitchen Scene to not conflict with the scene inside our use frame here. 
we get the different materials. Then to make it generic, I created a materials with all the items that has to apply a different material when it's in a different mode. And I did the same for the group that will be visible or hidden. Then in our use frame, this is where we do our different render on different render targets. We make our scene visible because it's hidden on the main uh, render. We set our render target to the first one. We apply the correct material to each object. We set the visibility to each object and we render the scene using our render camera to the render target. Then we switch to the second one. We do the same, but not using the previous mode, but the second mode, so it will display something else. We have the same logic, applying the correct material, setting the visibility of item, and we do our render. And because we are on a render target two, it will be done inside this render target. And then what we do is we hide our kitchen model, so it's within rendered scene, and we remove the render target, so it will be applied to the default render target of our 3JS project, and it will render our plane that contains the two texture with the shader. Let's jump to the interesting part, because so far you don't have to touch anything I showed you, unless you want to use a different model than the kitchen and display other scenes. What we have is a transition material. It's a custom shader material that I created. This is the exact same logic that in my hover image transition effect. So refer to it if you want to learn how to create it by yourself. What it takes is a reference, so render material, the different texture we apply to it, so the first one and the second one. And if we open our transition material code, it's a shader material with the different uniforms, so the progression we have, the two texture, and the type of transition we use. Here we have the default vertex shader. I didn't touch it, so it's the very default value. Then we have our fragment shader here. We get the UV, so it's the UV of the plane we are displaying. We get the two texture, the current progression, and the transition type. This is where you will have to code to create an interesting transition. It's within those lines that you will be able to create magic. We create the texture based on the UV of the object and its texture within texture. Same for the second one with text 2. Then we create a final texture, which is based on our progression. And if we are in horizontal mode, we will use the progression over the X axis. So it will go from left to right based on how far the progression is. Either it will show texture two or texture one. And if transition is equal to one, which means we are in vertical mode, instead of applying it based on the X axis, we do it on the Y axis. And we either display texture two and texture. So it's very simple. You can really enhance this shader to make it way more interesting. If you don't know where to start, there is my hover image transition effect that have way more interesting shaders. We have this first one using a noise effect that you could apply to make the transition between the two scenes. Or we have that second one that is using a displacement image with that nice wave effect. Or you have my other tutorial, the dissolve effect tutorial, in which you can switch between different objects with a nice dissolve effect. You can reuse that shader logic to do it for the transition between the two textures. And if you are really beginning with shaders, maybe I should have started with it, you can watch my shader tutorials to understand what it is about and iterate from here. Even here, there are some examples you can use for the transition. Thank you for watching, I'm impatient to see your submissions. Don't hesitate to ask questions on the Discord to get help if you are stuck. If you like the video, please hit the like button as it helps the channel be more visible to other creative developers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss the release of the second part next week. To wait until then, I recommend you to watch my other video tutorials, like this one, available here.